Hello, Chris Packham here on a fabulous sunny spring morning. Not quite brimstone time though, not yet. Brimstones are what really make my spring. That fabulous splash of sulphur bouncing down an otherwise brown hedgerow is something to lift the spirit. But here's something pragmatic about our spirits. Butterfly Conservation have just released a report which tells us that 80% of our butterfly species in the UK have declined since 1970. And I think many of us will have presided over that with personal stories, memories and reflections of a time when what were once common species were present in our communities and now they have long gone. But Butterfly Conservation have nailed the science to the wall and we trust in that science. So given that, we have to have grave concerns. Our butterflies and moths for that matter are very important indicators of our ecological community's health. And so if they are disappearing, they tell us a lot about that community in a broader sense. So that's pretty bad news. That's very bad news. The good news that comes with it is that when we apply our conservation techniques, they are highly effective. We have researched the behaviour, the ecologies, the physiology sometimes of these insects. We've tried and tested techniques and practices and we know that when we can implement those, we can reinstate, restore, reintroduce and recover those populations. So we've got to do something about it. I think we've got to act on a couple of levels. We have to ask our government to take far more serious and applied action to healing our unhealthy environment. That requires planning, it requires conviction, and it requires significant investment. And we should therefore ask, politely, our elected representatives to do something about that as rapidly and urgently as possible. But that's not to say that they have to fix everything. We have to fix things ourselves. So if we are fortunate enough to have a garden or access to a green space, maybe where you teach or where you work or, 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 or in your community, then we can, of course, shape that green space ourselves so it can be a better place for butterflies and moths. We can leave a bit of it to go wild. We can structure that wildness by actively planting nectar producing plants that are there throughout the course of the season. We can plant plants which are food plants for the larvae of these insects. So we have to take action, there's no doubt about that. I find these sorts of reports, frankly, increasingly terrifying, but I've heartened that you and I and Butterfly Conservation have the capacity to do good. We can also, of course, all make a donation to this fabulous charity. It's right up there. The, the, the level of science, the, the, the level of input from the volunteers, their collective skill, expertise, endeavour, energy and, and ability is unparalleled, absolutely unparalleled. And the ability to communicate that to the wider world is again at the forefront of what our charities should be doing. Butterfly conservation are quite simply brilliant. They are as brilliant as that brimstone bouncing down that hedgerow. So let's see what we can all do to support them as well. Thank you.